I'm a big fan of Russ Meyer. I've read Timothy McDonough's biography of Russ a couple of times. I have this awesome collection of DVDs. And for most of my adult life, uh, this poster has been hanging on my living room wall. I think Russ Meyer is a way underrated director and super important in the history of American cinema. And yeah, a uh, big fan. Welcome to Exploitation Reviews and me, Rob. Today I'm taking a look at 1975's Super Vixens from director Russ Meyer. Russ Meyer's work can be separated into a few periods. Uh, he went from the nudie cuties into more serious fare, uh, which he calls his gothic period, uh, even made it into Hollywood filmmaking, and then he returned to independent filmmaking and he returned to what he knew best, square jaws and big bosoms. And this film has my favorite of both of those things. We start with Clint. He's a gas station attendant with a needy and <laughs> a very controlling girlfriend, uh, Super Angel. All of the women in this film, by the way, will have Super as part of their name. It's one of the, I guess you'd call it a joke. She gets angry, threatens to burn the house down, and Clint comes running. The pair have relations, and then they have an argument which spills out into the driveway. A nosy neighbor calls the cops, the cops come and take Super Angel to the hospital and then have a sit down with Clint. That guy's trying to kill his wife! Oh, you oh, 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 the cop is Harry Sledge, played by Charles Napier, one of the squarest jaws in the business. I mean, look at that face. I can't believe he never had a bigger career. After a bit, Clint returns home and Angel sends him away. We think it's because she's angry with him, but no, it's because Harry is there. Angel puts the moves on and Harry is interested, but something about that candle is making him nervous. And this shot here is really just a fantastic piece of visual storytelling. Look at the way that stiff candle just mocks him. But don't worry, this is a Russ Meyer film. You're not required to pick up on subtlety. The next scene makes it perfectly clear what kinds of problems he has. Come on, Harry, I'm ready. I'm not. And in this film, like all of Russ Meyer's films, failure to please a woman in bed is not a medical issue. It's a character flaw. And we're about to find out just how flawed Harry's character is. That's what you get for being sassy. Angel hides in the bathroom and continues to mock Harry further. Uh, his anger increases and eventually he makes it inside. And then we have Super Vixen's most controversial scene. a bold claim here. I think this is the second best bathroom murder scene in film history. Only Psycho can top it. While all of this was happening, Clint was getting drunk at a local watering hole and ignoring the advances of Haji. Well, here I guess she's Super Haji. Being the boyfriend, he will of course be the prime suspect in Super Angel's murder. Uh, but because he ignored Haji's advances, uh, she does not provide an alibi for him. And now Clint is on the run. During his adventures, he first runs across a couple. That's John Lazar, by the way. You might recognize him from Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. And his girlfriend is Colleen Brennan. Uh, she appeared in quite a number of exploitation films, often in uncredited roles. 
In fact, she's been on this channel twice already, uh, once in Invasion of the B-Girls and once in Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS. Here she plays Super Cherry, and when Clint ignores her advances, he, once again, suffers. Are you detecting a pattern? And this is how the rest of the movie is going to go for the most part. Uh, Clint will run across beautiful, aggressive women, and when he spurns their advances, he will suffer. His next stop is a farm, and the farmer, played by Stuart Lancaster, uh, he's really quite nice, uh, but his wife is the legendary Ushi de Gard, and she is more than quite nice. After the farm is a motel with a kindly proprietor and his mute daughter. That's Deborah McGuire as Super Eula, and she was once married to Richard Pryor in case you needed another reason to be jealous of Richard Pryor. After the motel shenanigans, Clint walks through the desert, and then his dead girlfriend appears in fire on a mountain. And then Clint finds himself right back to where he started, uh, working as a gas station attendant and in a relationship with Super Angel. Except this time she's been reborn as Super Vixen. Uh, this idea, by the way, to reuse Sherry Eubank as the final Vixen uh, came to Russ Meyer from film critic and longtime friend Roger Ebert. Russ wanted to find a new Vixen for The Last Girl, but he couldn't. And it's kind of cool, it's similar to Cherry, Harry, and Raquel, where a uh, production problem ends up leading to a more interesting movie. Anyway, Clint and his new girlfriend, Super Vixen, the reborn Super Angel, uh, could have had a happy life out there in the desert, except Harry is still a part of the story, and he's not about to allow a happily ever after ending uh, without a fight. And that's way more than enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. This movie has the best collection of Russ Meyer women. Well, I guess Mondo Topless technically has the best collection, uh, but that's a silly documentary about strippers. Um, Super Vixens has the best collection of Russ Meyer women in a movie that has a story. That's fair. It also has my favorite villain of all the Russ Meyer films, played excellently by Charles Napier. Ah, I love that guy. And of course, it's a Russ Meyer film, so you have to mention the cinematography. Russ was an amazing photographer. He has really cool compositions, great angles, ah, just beautiful stuff. But the film's not perfect. Like a milkmaid in the hayloft, it has some shortcomings. Well, I'll tell you the truth, uh, there's not much about this film that I don't like. Uh, anything I say will be rather nitpicky, but, you know, let's pick some nits. Well, I guess I do kind of wish Haji had been better shot in this film. Um, her skin looks a bit waxy, and all that stuff glued on really detracts from her beauty. And, you know, she really was amazingly beautiful. <laughs> oh, wait, I do have a legitimate complaint. These shorts, oh my god, those things are a crime against ass. Well, I guess there are some things that might rub some people the wrong way in this movie. Uh, not me, but you know, people. Uh, the end of the film takes on kind of a surreal tone. Super Angel is reborn as Super Vixen. Uh, Clint and Harry uh, don't seem to recognize each other, even though uh, Harry is still tormented by uh, visions of Super Angel, who he murdered, and you know, inexplicably uh, still wants to murder uh, Super Vixen to you know, finish the job or whatever is going on. And yeah, this might sort of weird people out. It doesn't bother me, though. I think it gives the movie kind of a literary art house feel. I think it's really cool and makes for a much more interesting picture. And from the reviews of this film I've read over the years, uh, some people are bothered by that bathroom murder scene. But I'm not quite sure why. I, I think 
I think they just had the wrong idea about what a Russ Meyer film was. They thought, oh, Russ Meyer, it's going to be like a silly sex comedy. Uh, and then that happens, uh, which makes it clear this is not just a silly sex comedy. But if that was their thought process, then that's on them. They should have known better. Explicit violence is a big part of lots of Russ Meyer films. Motorcycle, Lorna, Up... Uh, faster Pussycat Kill Kill. I mean, come on, it's not called Faster Pussycat Pet Pet. Anyway, forget about those people who don't know nothing about nothing. This is a great Russ Meyer film. It has the best collection of Russ Meyer women. It's got the best villain in a Russ Meyer movie. It's silly and unserious, and at other times it's crazy and violent. It somehow manages to feel both like an exploitation film and a piece of art house cinema. It's amazing. I can't say enough good things about it, and I'm sure you're not surprised, but on my it scale, I say buy it. And try to find a copy like the one in that collection that has the commentary track on it. That's really interesting. I mean, Russ doesn't talk over the movie. He talks along with it, and he points out some interesting behind the scenes uh, information, but also talks about uh, low-budget filmmaking and how the rating system affected his business and how the industry changed and made it more difficult for people who made movies like him. Yeah, it's all just really interesting stuff. In fact, uh, most of the times when I watch the movie these days, I watch it with a commentary track. It's really cool. Anyway, it's hard to pick a favorite Russ Meyer film. Lots of worthy choices. What's yours? Let me know in the comments. Thank you.